Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Grade Gain, where every student can make progress. What we're going to be doing today is looking at the first required practical for chemistry. That's making salts. So, don't forget, you can download the instructions for this practical from my web shop. URL is appearing right here. So make sure you go and check that out, download the instructions, they're free of charge, so you may as well make use of them. It'll help you as we go through the video. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be using some sulfuric acid and copper oxide to make some copper sulfate, and we'll be evaporating that off to form some copper sulfate crystals. This is possibly one of the nicest experiments that you'll get in chemistry because the outcome from it is beautiful and you'll see that as we go through the whole process. So let's have a look at the equipment that we need. So the starting point for this experiment is a small 100ml beaker. Into that we'll be adding our one molar sulfuric acid take note of the warning signs it is irritant if it gets in our skin and eyes so we'll be making sure we're being safe and wearing safety specs we'll be using a conical flask we'll be using copper oxide again take note we've got irritant and harmful to the environment we'll be using a funnel some filter paper, a spatula, a glass rod for stirring with, a large 250ml beaker and an evaporating basin. The method that we're going to follow detailed in this little booklet is from AQA. Now having consulted with Cleeps the advisory service for safety there is a much better safer way to do this and I'll also show you that in the video but the first method that we'll look at is the one specified by the exam board so the first thing that we do is we measure the sulfuric acid into the beaker now we want about 40 mil it's not that accurate so we don't need to use a measuring cylinder We just use the gradations on our beaker. Having lit the Bunsen burner so that it's on the safety flame, we open the air hole so that we get a roaring blue flame and then slide the Bunsen burner underneath and we want to heat the acid gently so we don't open the air hole all the way and we wait until it becomes nearly boiling. So we can see that we've got bubbles starting to form. That's nearly boiling. So we slide out the Bunsen burner, put it onto the safety flame, and turn off the gas. Now we want to add the copper oxide, spatula at a time, until no more will dissolve into the sulfuric acid. And as you can see, you have to add it slowly, otherwise it's just going to boil over. Now remember, we have to do this very slowly, otherwise it's going to bubble out over the top. We've got our glass rod for stirring. 
Now let's add our first little bit of copper oxide. So you can see just that tiny amount makes it fizz as the reaction takes place. No need to stir at the moment. because it's all disappearing. But we are getting that lovely copper sulfate colour. Now we give it a little stir. to help the oxide dissolve and we can add a little bit more until we get to the point where we've got no more reaction happening and we're left with some copper oxide in the bottom of the beaker So because of the colour, we can see that no more copper oxide is going to dissolve into our sulfuric acid, so we're now at saturation point. Having cleared away our heating apparatus, we're now on to the filtration step. So, we take our filter paper, we fold it in half, then we fold it in half again. That gives us a cone with four layers. We take three layers to one side and one to the other, which means we've got a cone then. That goes into our uh, filter funnel and stands in our conical flask. We then add our sulfuric acid, copper oxide reaction into filter funnel and we can see we're getting our copper sulfate solution filtering through beautifully and we're left with unreacted copper oxide in the bottom of our jug not too much because we don't want to waste any having filtered our copper sulfate solution we're then going to transfer it to this evaporating dish. Now our evaporating dish is sitting on top of a beaker of water. Now for those of you that do cooking this is a bit like a bain-marie where you'd be melting your chocolate over a pan of hot water and we're going to heat that with our Bunsen burner. So with our Bunsen on the safety flame we open the air hole, get a nice roaring flame and start to heat up the water that's in the water bath which is then going to heat up the evaporating basin and evaporate off some of the copper sulfate solution so that we can be left with the crystals. Now the reason that Kleeps advise not to do this is because this is likely to spit if you overheat it and we don't want people with copper sulfate solution or copper sulfate crystals in their eyes. So this is the exam board recommended method, but it's not the safest method. And we're going to have a look at that safest method now. The safer method for preparing your copper sulfate solution is to stand your boiling tube of sulfuric acid in some just boiled water from the kettle. That will gently warm up the acid. That way you don't need a Bunsen burner and the heating apparatus and you don't run the risk of heating it too much. Then you can add your copper oxide. Kleeps method suggests that you have that already weighed out and we only use 15 mil, 15 centimeters cubed of sulfuric acid, not the 40 that the exam board recommend. 
So you can see it's a much smaller version, but you get the same results. You're still able to prepare a dry version of your copper sulfate crystals. Much, much safer and a better method to boot. Okay, But you need to be able to see the other apparatus and techniques that the exam board recommend because that might pop up in the exam. So it's really important that you have a go at doing it. I would recommend this method, but you are aware of what the practical entails if you do it on a larger scale as advocated by the exam board. All right, so hopefully that helps understand the difference between the two methods. So here we can see a different setup. Instead of having that Ban Marie type system, I've just got a conical flask with my copper sulfate solution in it. Now I can heat this, it will evaporate off most of the water, but because it's a conical flask, I'm not going to get much spitting coming out. So let's set this off heating, and we'll have a look at the crystals that we managed to get. So having evaporated off some of the water from our copper sulfate solution, we're now going to transfer it to a Petri dish to allow it to cool and crystallize. If you look closely, you can see the steam coming off the copper sulfate solution. We shall leave this now to evaporate off. Having left the copper sulfate solution to evaporate, we now have some beautiful copper sulfate crystals. Now the instructions say that you should take these out and pat them dry on paper towel. Now as you can see, mine are leaving absolutely nothing behind because actually I've left them for 48 hours rather than 24 and they are already bone dry. But we have some beautiful copper sulfate crystals there. So there we go. That concludes the first chemistry experiment for grade gain. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can see that it doesn't always go to plan. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Grade Gain here. And don't forget, click the like button, the bell notifications, and come along and hopefully we can all make progress together. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your GCSEs.